and like you said early on, kobudo and you were doing a, a dojo which didn't do kobudo and karate. For you, how has kobudo impacted your karate? Has your karate impacted your kobudo, and how has that impacted you personally? Oh, definitely. I, I think to really understand one, you need to to at least explore the other, if not mutually train. Um, and I think of uh, Hokama Sensei was visiting in 2017. We were at a, a seminar together, and someone asked, "Which is more important, karate or kabudo?" And Sensei responded, "Which is more important, your right eye or your left?" Hey, stop. <laughs> And I thought that's a, a brilliant metaphor for it. And I find it- It is brilliant. I find it so challenging because I'll be working, you know, I'll be working on something in open hand and all of a sudden I'll get a flash of, oh yeah, it's just like in. And the other thing that I find kind of interesting as well. And if, if we look, there's a bit of a spectrum when it comes to, um, to stances, for example. So I trained a little bit of Katori Shintoru sword years ago. Lucky, you lucky, lucky. I'm sorry, there's going to be a swear word here, guys. You <laughs> lucky bastard. <laughs> but what I found is that, you know, in sword, the stances, first of all, are entirely different, but they're incredibly particular. And, you know, if your sanction's a little bit this way or that way, depending upon your size and so on, well, okay, no, when it comes to sword, it's this. Then you've got karate where there's a little bit of movement. And then kabuto, there's kind of, well, it's kind of kabuto dutch. You know, it's kind of like this. And, and I generally train and have been taught a lot of my kabuto that relating it to my karate as far as my stance is. It's kind of a shikodachi. You're kind of in a, but it allows you that variability. But I think it's always such an important reminder. You know, we train to do terrible things with our hands in the hopes that we never do put a weapon in those hands and it really should have you being aware of the danger that can be presented to you or that you can present. And that's part of why, you know, the, the, um, the calligraphy that, that hangs above our shomi. Um, it says, Oni te hotoke kokoro. And it's a famous quote of Nagamine Shoshin. And it says, uh, heart of a Buddha, hands of a demon. Hands of a demon, heart of a Buddha. And if you look at that, um, to me, that's such a profound statement because it's not just about martial arts. A heart surgeon does the same thing. This guy cuts into your chest in the most brutal fashion to save your life. We have that same capability to show incredible compassion and love and empathy, which is what when you speak with the Okinawans, they say, we train karate so that we know we can defend our family and then we're free to love everyone. It, it is very empowering and humbling to realize that the more you train, I find for me, the gentler I've become. I hope I've become humbler as well. And that's, you know, that still has to be pounded out in the forge of the dojo uh, frequently. But this idea that the more we train, the more we should be able to help and care for others. And the more our ego is in check uh, is really, really key to me in what we do. Um, just before the Christmas break and that, um... Um, soon say, so, hey, look, we're just having a little bit of a get together with a few friends and we're going to share a beverage of your choice. And it was a, the Zoom thing. And I went, yeah, yeah, cool. That'll be cool. And I, I guess in my mind, I had like, I'm going to hang out with Steve Sensei and, you know, maybe a couple of students. And <laughs> I get on there and, and there's Patrick McCarthy Hunchy and there's uh, Paul Enfield Sensei and Michelle Enfield and um mr K mr is it oh my gosh oh, roy common um, yes yeah roy, roy common sensei and all these people who and i i remember <laughs> i remember just thinking i think i've 
pushed the wrong button and I've ended up in the in a meeting of the Karate Avengers squad. Um, what is it about your upbringing? What is it about your culture being from Canada? And, you know, we can do all the funny things and talk about how when I've been in Canada, I found uh, the people of Canada to be very much like the people of New Zealand. Um, what is it about the Canadian culture and your upbringing that you think you're able to, you know, we talk about working on culture. What is it about your culture that you allows you to create these friendships, these relationships, and that resonates with so many of these senior sensei? I think, you know, Canada is a very large geographic country, but a very small country in the grand scheme of things. <clears throat> you know, we have a neighbor to the south of us who's more than 10 times our size, uh, yet on a smaller landmass. So I think there's, there's that realization that we're a small part of something much bigger, which I think is always good to, to think you're the small part of something much bigger than we're the biggest part of something. Um, I think as well, though, one of the things, I mean, I was raised, uh, you know, my, my background is English-Irish, um, but it was very kind of stoic, you know, stiff upper lip, uh, British side of it. But what I really loved and embraced early on in karate, and, and you and I joked about it, is someone once said to me that karate is emotion in motion. And there are certain kata that to me are very personal, very emotional. I, I, I feel differently when I perform them um, and when I train them. And, and I think understanding that there were other people out there who had that same feeling, it was kind of like, hello, oh, you too, awesome. And because of my, my everyday gig uh, where I'm online, it, you know, Facebook was a great way to start this, but in a strange way, the last year has been even more of, of connections. Um, and, and I just tell you a little bit, so I've been using Zoom for almost five years. Um, I had two students who met in our dojo, fell in love in our dojo. We, you know, they had a, a wedding that was, a wonderful combination of Canadian and Japanese. Um, they went to Okinawa on their honeymoon. They have two great kids, but they moved a couple hours away and still wanted to be part of the dojo. So we we're like, cool, we'll try Skype. We'll try this, we'll try that. We settled on Zoom. And I mean, doing Zoom for almost five years. When things got very bad here in North America, sort of last early last March, and, and dojos were wondering, what the heck are we going to do? We literally went, Okay, guys, today's Monday, Wednesday, we're online, everybody. And that was it, you know, the, the dojo was preset. Um, and I've, I've been very fortunate to, to be able to help and, and been asked to help a number of dojos, probably in the, you know, in excess of 70 to, to 100 dojos around the world. I've helped get online. I helped Hokama Sensei get online and start teaching, um, which was amazing. You know, he still doesn't have a cell phone or an email account, but he now teaches online. But I think it's helped us realize that as big as the world is, it's actually quite small. And to build the community and to have relationships like you and I have, where literally, you know, I was painting the other day and suddenly, you know, FaceTime's ringing, um, just to be able to pick up and chat that way. And to realize, especially if you're on a bit of a, um, a self-directed path, that you're not alone on that. And I think that's been one of the big things of the last few years, that people are, are much more, um, open to discussing individual paths and, and are now feeling that that isn't necessarily a, a taboo for them to be. And you can have an individual path and still be part of an organization. I think that's one the other great things that people are seeing is that it's not one or the other. You can have the things that you want to explore and the parts of, of our training that mean the most to you, but that doesn't mean you have to walk out the door uh, in doing that. Yes. What are you working on in your personal training at the moment? <sighs> Trying to get back in shape after almost 10 weeks on my butt. Um, mm. the, the eye thing, the, so, you know, as, as you know, third week in November, suddenly where's the site in my left eye? There's this giant spot. And I'd love to say, you know, there were three of them and they came out of the back alley and, and, you know, and I went cypher. <laughs> No, literally, like I was out driving and suddenly the eye wasn't working. So um, detached retinal surgery, you have to be upright and basically motionless for almost three weeks. 
uh, well, things settle. And then six weeks, the surgeon's like, you're not doing anything till the new year. And then starting to get back. And for me, I, I found it, again, it came back to my practice. I had to convince myself that I was not doing nothing. I was actively healing. And once I was able to frame it, that this was part of what was going to get me back training again. And, you know, I still haven't been hitting the makiwara. Um, sanding a floor this last week was probably the most uh, impact I've had on doing things. But being able to, okay, train the kata in your mind, go through, analyze, spend time going back and studying what you're doing. Study more history once I was able to start reading again, being able to do those things and get back to it. Uh, I started to get back to my kobudo. Um, I absolutely love kobudo. I, I, I love goju, but kobudo, there's something about it. And even my son, Liam, who's 12, given the choice, he's like, weapons, dad, go, you know, let's do tanfa, let's do whatever. Um, he's become quite, quite good with a bow over the last little while. Uh, and bow and eku are, are kind of my thing. Sai, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with, but getting back in training. Um, we had a class last night and we spent time working a number of things, but you know, my favorite kata is Seyunchen. Um, it's a, interesting, I call it a, an, an interesting choice, a very interesting yeah. choice. I'm, I'm, I'm prepared to be swayed on this. Okay, so I call it a big sweaty guy kata, BSG. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm a reasonable sized guy, but you're never gonna have to worry about being kicked in the head by me unless I'm coming down a step ladder. Okay, I don't kick high. I will kick waist height. I have a, you know, it's kind of like Smoke and Joe Frazier. I'm not Ali. I'm coming forward and it's a reverse punch, you know, and a front thrust kick for the most part, if, if I'm fighting. But getting back, but working Sage and playing with it and crafting and, okay, I've, I've had eight or 10 weeks of playing around with, what about this as an application? How about this variation? And, Oh, how about if he's coming the other side and now getting to actually stop having it be mental exercise and get back to being physically exploring it again. Um, that has been rejuvenating for me and getting back. And the days when I go and train a little too hard and my body tells me don't do that quite yet. Um, or my wife or, you know, one of my mentors says you shouldn't be doing that hard yet. yet. It's, it's made me, I don't want to say fall in love with it again, but it's made you realize how important it was to you. Uh, it's made you realize that this is something that, you know, I joke with people, but it's true. I want to drop on the mat after a really good kata. If it's not a good one, I'm coming back. You know, you crazy kids in your newfangled kata. Sanchin <laughs> um, is my love-hate kata. And then oh, really? it's got a, it's got a uh, yeah, it's, I'm more of a, I'm more of a, I like Seisan, I like Shifoshin, I like Saifa. I, I couldn't have said that a few years ago. I really like Saifa. Um, Saifa was always my first favorite. I, and yeah. I think it's a remarkable kata. Yeah, I'm not remarkable doing it, but you know, it is a remarkable kata. No, I, this but, has been great. Uh, please keep doing what you're doing. It, it's wonderful. Uh, you know, we have a, a couple of mutual friends, she and Jeff McDonald, so on, who have, have been great guests as well. Um, honored to be here today. Uh, enjoy our, our friendship. Uh, you know, I live one street away from Wellington Street. So uh, there's definitely a, a need for, uh, I think, a, a mutual road trip over the next little while. Yeah, you, you come to Wellington, New Zealand, and I'll come to Wellington Road. There's okay. also Wellington Road in Wellington.